Today, I'm going to be sharing with you something interesting and the topic is can a piece of code actually fix my posture? Hey everyone, my name is Mohamed Essen and I'm a Google Developers Expert in Angular and I'm a software architect at Synchron AB. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you something interesting and the topic is can a piece of code actually fix my posture? And the answer is yes. But before we go forward, if you want to follow me or if you want to connect with me, send me a message, ask about what kind of milk you should buy or the shampoo you should buy, don't call me. But if you have technical questions, just see this link at the bottom and, and reach out to me. I usually reply in 24 hours. So so we are going to talk about these technologies that we are going to talk about for this particular topic. So when I say yes, a piece of code can fix your posture, I'm doing it with Angular and machine learning. So the question is, what is Angular? And in short, it's magic. You have a whole framework that you can use to create applications very fast. I can explain this a bit as well. Angular is sort of a development platform. It's not just a single library, but it is something that has a components based framework, which means you can create build building blocks for your application. It also has a really strong ecosystem of development tools and libraries, for instance, unit testing, end-to-end -end testing and whatnot. And it also has a suite of developer tools, like you can check, debug your application, see the source map. And also there are multiple things when it comes to using state management and the dev tools around that. So it's absolutely awesome. Now, the libraries in the Angular ecosystem are huge, but the good thing is that you don't have to actually look for, hey, what kind of HTTP uh, package should I use? for HTTP calls or what kind of package would I use for routing unlike the other libraries out there in which you have to decide what way you should go. Angular has a consistent ecosystem that you can use to build your large scale applications even and it's most likely that if a new developer comes in to your team he probably would have the same mindset of working with Angular because it's so opinionated. Now let's ask this question is being a software developer tough? I would personally say no but Dave says it's not stressing at all and the fun fact is that Dave is only 28 years old. You can see how glowy his skin is. Now the thing is that we work all day, day and night, coding or surfing and whatnot. But specifically as developers, we mostly spend a large chunk of our time on the desk compared to our bed actually. And when we do so, it actually happens in a lot of time that we end up in something like this. So you you accidentally try to get up from your chair and then you get those cramps and you're like, ah, oh, I hate my life why is it so hard but technology is something that has been improving lives you know for so long you have web technologies being used in different programs from nasa you also have technologies doing crazy things like even those uh, those robots that kind of move around in your house cleaning stuff going back to their charging docks i mean they're crazy but the thing is you might be thinking hey asan enough chit chat what did you actually build and i built something with these technologies angular ml5 P5.js and Electron. I'm going to quickly share about P5.js and Electron. We already discussed about Angular. P5.js is a library that takes care of drawing on either your screen, your canvas, or it also allows you to draw on your the HTML elements. And Electron is something that is used for creating a shell that you can use to create desktop applications and kind of distribute them on Linux, you know, Windows, Mac, and whatnot. <clears throat> yeah, let's talk about ML5 now. So ML5 essentially is a library that allows you to do multiple crazy things including image classification sound classification and not just figuring out hey is this a cat or a dog but also it kind of allows you to see or to use your camera for face mesh, for facial expressions as well. You can also have things like monitoring your hand and, and the gesture. For example, it would essentially have identified each point of your fingers and you can do crazy stuff with that, you know, using machine learning. And it also has text classification and it also has a lot of helpers that a lot of organizations are using from ML5.js. Now the thing is, hey, what do we use from ML5 exactly in this particular project or in this context? And we use something called PoseNet. PoseNet is something provided by ML5, which is essentially a neural network. And it essentially has already pre-trained models that it uses to identify the pose of your body, which means that it takes into account where your nose is using your camera, or if you provide it an image, and it also sees like your ears, your shoulders and whatnot. And I'm going to show you some examples. So this is on their official site. And you can see that in all of these images, we have different lines, which are essentially showing the person's pose 
clothes and specifically the skeleton of the person. And this is what we have. Now, you might see that, hey, this these dots on like the eyes and the nose and the ears, they look crappy. And that is actually right. But it depends from camera to camera. For some reason, the focal length of the camera distinguishes the placement of these dots using ML5. It's more accurate with some other technologies as well that I'm going to share with you. But essentially, in my webcam of my MacBook, it looks much better. And let me show you how it looks. So this is how it looks on my webcam. So you can see that it is recognizing my post, my skeleton, a classic dab there. Then you can see as I turn around, it also so sees my position and a fun jump at the end just for the sake of goodness. So let's have a quick demo on how the app actually looks. So this is how it looks in general. It's a really simple application, really simple UI. What happens is that you start your application and it trains on your data. So it's the most accurate as possible. So what it does is that initially I'm going to move it forward. And here you see that it first takes into account the correct posture. So the app would ask you to look into the camera sitting straight in the correct posture. Then it would also ask ask you to look left and right while you're sitting straight and looking up and down. So all the possible combinations that you can think of when you're sitting straight and working, you would essentially register all those. Then you are going to also register the data or the training data for incorrect posture. So you can see that I'm kind of leaning forward in this one. And then I'm also looking left and right, up and down. And once you are done with that, it trains the data right on the device itself. The good thing is that none of the data is stored anywhere on cloud or no personal data is sent anywhere. Every Everything that is being trained here actually sits on the user's device and it's loaded from the device on the next run of the application. So there's no data being recorded. So once the training data is done, you can see that it detects when I'm sitting straight and it also detects when I'm not sitting straight as the incorrect posture. And it also sends a notification when you have been sitting for quite, uh, quite a time, for instance, like a minute in the wrong posture. So it notifies as a Windows notification. It, it's kind of here and cut out in the video. But but you get a notification and that it tells you, hey, please try to sit straight. So that's pretty much about it, the demo. And what's next? We are going to move away from ML5 to TensorFlow. There is something called MoveNet. There are also other strategies that TensorFlow provides. I was looking at the TensorFlow documentation on GitHub and I found out that they are probably deprecating the support for PoseNet. So they are going to move towards MoveNet now. I'm also going to be looking into the open source maintenance and distribution on multiple platforms so you can start using it from tomorrow let's say and finally a shameless plug this was built with angular and if you are interested in angular i've written an amazing book called the angular cookbook and it has over 80 recipes that you can use to level up your skills it has more than 600 pages of angular goodness and this is doing amazing in terms of community adoption it has been uh, already translated into serbian and someone asked me today that hey is this going to be available in spanish and i was really amused by even the thought of this being translated so if you want this, here's the link. Go check it out. Let me know how you find it. And finally, if you have a dog, never take the dog to snowboarding because you might end up in some situation like this, which is funny but sad at the same time especially for the dog you know and that's pretty much it thank you so much for having this and let me know your thoughts in the comments how you find it if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me i'm Essen, and as always happy coding